Hey everyone, Theo here. In today's video, I want to show you how you can integrate your Android phone or tablet with a Mac. I'm going to show you some apps, some functionality, some workflow on how you can use your Android phone or tablet seamlessly with Mac OS. For example, I'm going to show you how you can use your Android tablet as an external display for your Mac how to transfer files directly from either devices, where to store your photos so that you can have access to your photos anywhere, and how to share clipboard items. For example, if you copy some text on the Android tablet, how can you use that text on the Mac and vice versa. Let's start with external display support. For this, the app you need is Duet. The setup with Duet is quite straightforward. So you have to install the app on the Mac and also on the Android tablet, which I have already done. So if I remember correctly, the price of this app is $20 and it's a one-time purchase. So now I have both devices connected in extended desktop mode and I can move the window from the Mac over to Android. And the latency and response is actually pretty good. However, the frame rate or latency, it's not quite as good compared to the Mac. It's good, but not as good compared to the Mac. This is wireless display connection, so having latency is not surprising. These are the different display options. So you can choose to mirror the display. You can choose the desktop space, the resolution, frame rate currently at 60 fps and the image quality currently at high the image quality is pretty good but it's not 100 percent i would say this is maybe 90 or 95 percent if you take a very close look there is actually slight image compression but it's difficult to tell unless you have two displays side by side to compare with there are two versions of the app Duet Display, which is the one that I'm using here, is a one-time purchase and according to the website, it supports cable connection, not wireless connection, but for some reason I was able to get it to work with wireless mode. And this app supports touch. There is no proper finger gesture support, so what you can do is click, double click, click and drag, and there is also no proper pen support. If you use a pen, there is no pressure sensitivity. So in this case, it actually just works like your finger and there is also no palm rejection. For drawing purposes, there is noticeable latency. So the drawing experience is not going to be good. And if you want pressure sensitivity, palm rejection and proper pen support, the company recommends you to upgrade to the monthly subscription app which I'm not sure if it's worth the money. So this app is going to work great when it comes to showing you extended desktop. However, it's not that great for drawing. Anyway, in this case with this Samsung tablet, I can already draw with the Samsung S Pen with the apps that I can find from Google Play Store such as Clip Studio, Infinite Painter, Sketchbook Pro, Medibank Paint Pro. So there isn't much reason for me to use extended display so that I can use the desktop apps like Photoshop or Affinity Photo for drawing. Next, let's talk about file transfers. I'm talking about direct file transfers, not uploading your files to cloud storage and downloading your files from cloud storage. The easiest way to transfer files directly is probably to use those file transfer websites. One of them is called ShareDrop. Io. So you have to launch that web page on both your Mac and the Android device. On the web page, it's going to show your device. In this case, this is the Mac. It's also going to show your other device that's on the same Wi-Fi network. In this case, this is the Android tablet. So to transfer files to the Android tablet, just tap here and you can select the files you want to transfer. Same applies on the Android tablet. If you want to transfer files from this tablet over to the Mac, just select the files and transfer them over. The files are transferred through the local Wi-Fi network, so the transfer speed will be limited by the Wi-Fi network. And the files are not uploaded to the website, but if you are 
not confident of the security, um, there are other ways to transfer files directly. On your Mac, go to System Preferences, go to Sharing, and go to File Sharing and enable that. This will give you the SMB URL, click Options, make sure you check box this, Share Files and Folders using SMB, make sure your name is here and it's on. On the Android tablet, in this case, I'm using a Samsung tablet with One UI 4.1. Open the file browser, select network storage and add network storage, select SMB. Hopefully the Mac will show up. I actually have to try this several times before this showed up. And now just type in your name and password to connect. So I've just connected to the MacBook Air. There is a green bar here because I've just copied a file that I want to transfer to the MacBook Air. So now I can go into the MacBook Air file directory. Let's just copy the file to the desktop. There. SMB provides network storage capability to the Mac. So this allows you to transfer files to and fro from both devices directly. Transferring files with SMB only works with existing files and there are some limitations. For example, let's say I want to transfer this image over to the Mac. If I use SMB, I will have to export this into JPEG and transfer the files. Let me show you another way which is faster and that is to export or share this image. If I click save here, I will have to save it as a JPEG and transfer two steps. But if I click share, and now I can use this FTP client app to transfer the file directly to the Mac. But before you can transfer, once again, you have to set up your Mac to accept file transfers. You have to use remote login. And here it tells you that you are using SSH and SFTP. So let's turn this on. Once you set up remote login, you will see this FTP URL, which you should remember because you need to use it later. And there is this checkbox here that says allow full disk access for remote user. If you don't check this, you can transfer files from the Android tablet to the Mac, but you won't be able to transfer files from the Mac over to the Android tablet. So if you want to transfer files from the Mac, over to Android, you have to check this. On the Android tablet, you have to install an FTP client app. I'm using NFTP. In the FTP client, just enter the FTP URL provided by the Mac, port 22, enter your username, password, select the folders you want to send the files to, and save. And now let's share this file over. So let's export this, share, you can add the FTP shortcut here and tap on the FTP, tap OK, and done. You can see that file appear on the Mac. Here's the third way to transfer files directly. And this time we are going to use another file transfer website, which is called Airmore. So once you're on the website, it will present to you a QR code. You will have to install the Airmore app on the Android tablet as well. So once you have installed that, you have to scan to connect and once the tablet is connected to the Mac, it's going to show you the file directory of the Android tablet. And because you now have the access to this Android tablet, you can transfer files to and fro easily. So on the website, when you click on the files folder, it will show you the Android file directory. The last way to transfer files that I know of is to use a cable. This is great if you want security, if you want to transfer many files, and if you want to transfer like really huge files, uh, gigabytes worth of files. Using a cable will give you the best transfer speeds. In this case, it's SSD transfer speeds. You have to give permission to both the Android tablet and the Mac. So now you have access to the file directory of the Android tablet on your Mac. For all those wireless file transfers that I talked about earlier, 
the transfer speed will be limited by the local Wi-Fi network and when you transfer like really huge files it's going to be really slow so at least with Android you can still connect a cable to the Mac Apple AirDrop wireless file transfer is extremely slow when you're transferring many files and huge files. The next app I want to show you will help with clipboard features and it's called Clipped. You have to install the Clip app on the Android tablet and the Clip browser extension on your web browser on your Mac, which I have already done so. So I'm using Opera web browser. I'm going to copy this text here. You cannot press command c to copy you actually have to right click clip selection if you just copy the clipboard will not be shared so you have to clip selection once you have clipped the text there will be a notification that will appear on the android tablet the notification basically says your text is on the clipboard so now you can just paste the text that you copied from the mac over to android you can do the same on android over to the Mac. The app can be used to clip images as well, which I'm going to do so right now. So let's clip this image here. All the items, the text, the photos that you clip will be stored on the clipboard, which is accessible to you. So that's the image there. There are some limitations to this app though. For example, on Mac OS, I can copy the URL, I can copy file names, and those tags will be pasted or stored on the clipboard. However, on the Android tablet, I cannot copy URLs, I cannot copy file names. So on Android, there are things that cannot be copied onto the clipboard. The next thing I want to talk about is photo sharing. Like where should you save your photos? I would recommend you save your photos on Google Photos or Microsoft OneDrive because if you save your photos on Google Photos and Microsoft OneDrive, you will be able to access those photos from any device with Google Photos and OneDrive. If you save your photos on a Mac in the Photos, in the Apple Photos folder, those photos will only be available on Mac devices. If you save your photos in the Apple Photos app, you are basically locking yourself into the Mac ecosystem. So in the future, if you want to, let's say, use a Windows PC instead of a Mac, um, it's going to be very tedious to transfer the thousands of photos over to Windows. If you have your photos in Google Photos or Microsoft OneDrive, you don't have to transfer at all. Microsoft OneDrive can also be used for backup and the monthly subscription fee for the one terabyte plan is actually very reasonable compared to Google Drive. And you can get all the Microsoft Office apps on both the Android tablet and on the Mac. And when you do print screen or screenshots, all those screenshots can be saved automatically within the screenshots folder within Microsoft OneDrive. So you can access those screenshots from any computer or device. I can't talk much about calls and messaging because I don't have an Android phone for calls and messaging. However, I do use WhatsApp and this is actually a bookmark to the WhatsApp website. Anyway, with web WhatsApp, you will be able to link all your devices together and assess all those messages. I believe you should be able to do so with other messaging platforms as well. All right, I hope this video is useful. If you guys know of any other apps that can integrate macOS and Android seamlessly together that I did not feature in my video, share with me and others in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.